Make a beautiful, simple shawl with Grandma's Simple Eyelet Shawl. This has a nice triangular pattern. It starts with just a few stitches and increases in a double eyelet method. And you have a nice stockinette field. Make a nice triangle. And then when you get to your desired width, you have a nice pico bind off. So this is a shawlette with one ball of yarn, but you could add two, three, four balls of yarn and grow and grow until you get the size that you want. It's a very simple pattern. I'll help you begin and then you make that size and then I'll help you with the uh, pico bind off. So we're going to do all of this in this video today here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To make this beautiful simple triangular shawl, which is Grandma's Simple Eyelet Shawl, please click down in the video description and get the link below to our blog. The blog will have some ads on it, so if you want it ad-free, you can download and purchase our PDFs from Ravelry and Etsy stores for Good Knit Kisses. Now, this pattern does have a nice repeat to it, so um, we do need to get you started with um, a very particular type of increase uh, to get you here, and then we'll have a four row repeat that this um, pattern continues to repeat on until you get your desired width across. Uh, this particular uh, shawl that you see here is actually more of a shawlette and we did it with one ball, but we do have multiple sizes and how many balls you would need to get those sizes on our blog. I won't go over that in the video just so we can keep it as short as possible. And so um, I'm going to show you the repeat to get you to the increase about to here and then you're going to continue a four row repeat in order to um, continue adding on the right amount of stitches. You'll keep repeating that until you get to your desired width across and then we'll make the Pico bind off. So um, grab your um, uh, blog pattern, get your needles and your yarn and we will begin Again, our row one. We will have right and left-handed tutorials available, so click down below in the video description to get the right or left-handed tutorial. All right, let's dive right in. We're going to cast on four stitches. You can use whatever cast on you like. Know that I'm going to show you the long tail cast on here and then later on during our Pico bind off, we are gonna do a knitted cast on. It doesn't matter which cast on you begin with, um, but I do want you to know that I will show you what you need for the knitted cast on. Uh, you can start by making a slip knot. I'm actually not going to do that this time. I'm just going to start by um, laying my yarn over and uh, putting my um, tail in the front. And I only have a few stitches, so just pull out a nice long tail. And we're gonna pull it back like this. Just grab it with our hands, pull back. The tail's at the thumb, so the tail toward me, the ball at the back. And we're just gonna scoop underneath where my thumb is, go down at the finger, and pull up. And we've got two stitches on here now. And we're gonna do it again. Go up with the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let it go. And up with the thumb, down the finger, down the thumb, and let it go. So now we have four stitches on our needle. And you want to just knit across. Make sure you're grabbing your ball yarn, not the tail. And we want to knit all four stitches for row one. Okay, that is the um, wrong side, so we're going to turn that over, and on the right side, we will be increasing, and we're going to knit one, and then we're going to knit one front back, so we're going to knit in the front of the stitch as normal, and then swing around to knit in the back. Now, you can knit in the back, or you can just pick it up, so this is just an alternate. I'm not going to add any extra um, increasing by um, making that a knit stitch. So this is just another technique of doing it. You can choose to knit it if you want. So we're going to um, knit one again, and then we're going to increase again, knit front back. So knit in the front of that stitch, swing around and just pick up that stitch. All right, so now you should have four stitches gone uh, increased to six. So we have six stitches across. We're gonna turn it over and we're gonna work on the wrong side and knit all six of our stitches. Okay, turn that over. We're back on the right side 
And now we're going to increase to eight stitches. We're going to knit one, knit front and back. So knit that stitch, swing around, pick it up, and then knit the next stitch, and then knit front back again. So knit it, swing around, pick it up, and then knit to the end. So we're knitting those last two stitches, and you should have eight stitches on your needle. Go ahead and turn that over. And we're going to knit all eight stitches. Okay. And turn this over. So we are ready um, for our first uh, increase with yarn overs. So if you are a beginner and this was too fast for you, be sure and click down below to see my uh, beginner tutorials where we go a little slower or um, check on that playback um, speed on YouTube where you can just click it and make it slower. Okay, so uh, this is our first uh, increase row uh, with yarn overs. This is row six. We're going to knit two and then we're gonna increase with a yarn over. This is our first eyelet. So just wrap it around your needle and then knit two again. And then yarn over and then knit until the end of the row. And you will have 10 stitches at the end. So we're, we're increasing by two stitches every time we increase on a row. Now we're gonna turn that over. And this is the last time that we're gonna have a knit row um, in between our um, increase row. So we're gonna knit all 10 of these stitches. All right, we are on row eight and we have 10 stitches, we're going to increase to 12. And then we're going to make another increase right after it with more yarn overs. So we're going to knit two, and then yarn over, knit two again, and yarn over, and then knit to the end of the row. Turn that over. If you need to check your stitch count, you can check that you have uh, 12 stitches. Okay. And then now we want to make it into 14 stitches. So we're going to knit two and yarn over. This is row nine. And then uh, knit two, yarn over again. I just did it without saying it. And then we're gonna knit to the end of the row. And when you get to this part, you can see um, like where it's kind of loose, where you have your yarn overs from before, you'll, you'll see that or feel that differently where they're really loose. Here it is, here's that yarn over. And continue knitting to the end of the row. Okay, so we now have 14 stitches. Once you have um, those 14 stitches, turn it over, and you are actually back on a right side row, and we want to knit all of the stitches. So 14 stitches, knitting all of them. And um, if you need to go ahead and put a stitch marker on the front here, just so you know that this is a right side row, uh, then go ahead and do that. Um, after you knit several rows, after a while, you'll be able to tell where the right side is. Um, but for now, it might be something you need to do. Okay, turning it over. So now we are going to be on the wrong side and we're gonna do some purling because we need a stockinette uh, field, the main part in the middle. So we're going to um, knit six and this will be our border. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six. And then we're gonna purl to the last six stitches. So on here, um, you don't have many, so you can just um, count backwards here. So we have two, four, six. So we only have two stitches to purl. Oops, put my yarn in the front and purl those stitches. Oops, there we go. One, two, and then we're going to knit to the end of the row. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, turn that over. So now we're on row 12. This is the beginning of our repeat. So um, these right here are unique uh, to the beginning of your uh, shawl and you don't need to repeat any of those again. But rows 12 through 15 are the ones that you're gonna continue to pre repeat until you get your desired width. So this is marking the beginning of that. It's always going to be knit two, yarn over, knit two, yarn over, and then knit to the end of the row. And you can hear my cable um, clicking. I'm using uh, interchangeable needles so I can make my cable longer or shorter. If you are working with straight needles, um, you will have to switch to something with a cable on it later on uh, because your stitches will just get too crowded to make an entire shawl on it. I recommend just sticking with the same set of needles um, for gauge and, and everything being consistent. Sometimes it can make a change in your, um, your sizing if you switch your needles. Okay, so uh, we're on row 13, and we're gonna do the same thing we just did as far as increases go, but we're gonna have some purl stitches in here. So we're going to knit two, and yarn over, knit two, and yarn over, okay? And then knit two more stitches, and it finishes out that border. And now we're going to purl to the last six stitches. So, purl one, two, three, four, and you should be able to see that you have six left. And one cool thing is you can see that um, there's this really loose yarn over and it's a really good way of knowing, oh, I have six stitches left because you remember that second yarn over was the sixth um, stitch in, okay? So uh, you just put your yarn to the back and you're going to knit to the end of the row. So knit six stitches. Turn that over and knit all stitches on this row. This is row 14. So knit across the whole thing. Again, this is your right side row. Okay, turn that over. This is the last row in our repeat. We're going to uh, knit six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you guessed it, purl till the last six stitches. So you're increasing uh, two for two rows in a row so you get four extra stitches and then the next two rows you're just keeping that stock and net going with the border so you're not increasing on the two following rows so over um, a period of four rows you're actually increasing four stitches so we're just going to uh, put yarn forward and purl to the last six stitches 
and this time you're not going to have that yarn over to kind of tell where that six stitches so you'll just need to pay attention to that okay and then I've, i just happened to stop right at the six i've gotten used to this pattern so then put our yarn forward and knit to the end Okay, turn that over. Okay, so you can see our beginning of our shawl here. You have your nice lace work showing through and um, your stockinette field starting in this little triangle here. And so you're just going to keep repeating those rows 12 through 15 until you get to your desired width across. So pause your video and meet me back up when you get to that point. And, um, you know, you can save this tail to weave in at the end, and I'll remind you of that. Uh, but you could go ahead and start weaving that in after you get uh, a few more uh, inches on here. So, all right, continue on. I'll see you soon. Here's the progress on my shawl. I've already woven in my tail and we just continued our repeat until you get your desired width across the top here. Uh, this one is uh, just using one ball and so I just have ample left to do a pico bind off. You can also add in and tie in another ball and make it much wider and longer. And for more information on those sizes and things, go to our blog link um, below. And now just make sure that you have a um, number of stitches that is divisible by six, and we're gonna make a pico bind off. Now you can use a regular bind off. You are gonna have a rolled um, edge from the stocking net if you just use a basic bind off, but I think the pico bind off adds something more. Make sure it's divisible by six. If not, keep increasing until you get that point, or you could frog back if you need to and have ample yarn left. If you don't know how much yarn you need for pico bind off uh, for this width, be sure and visit our blog um, for information on that and we'll give that to you. To make a pico bind off we are going to be adding stitches periodically to cast on two stitches by knitted cast on and then we're going to bind off eight stitches. So because we're adding two stitches on and binding off eight you're really only working with six at a time so your pattern uh, needs to be or your stitch count needs to be divisible by six. We're going to continue that repeat until the very end and then we'll have another technique to add on an extra little pico at the end so you'll want to pay attention to that part. All right to begin you're going to insert your needle into this very first stitch here and you're going to knit it as you normally would and pull through and before you um, take it off like a regular knit stitch we're going to take it and twist it and insert our other needle into the other side of the stitch okay and then cast it on or lay it on this needle here all right so let's do that again our working needle we're going to put it in to the very first stitch and that's actually the one that we just made and we're going to um, yarn over and pull through as if to knit and then we're going to twist our stitch insert the other needle into the stitch on our working yarn uh, working needle and go in there and slide off and you've got a new stitch all right so we've cast it on two and now you're going to bind off eight so i like to um, count them as i do the bind off part so we're going to knit and then we knit the next stitch and now here's where we're going to count. So we're going to bind off one, knit the next stitch, bind off two, knit the next stitch, bind off three, knit the next stitch, bind off four, knit the next stitch, bind off five, knit, bind off six, knit, bind off seven, knit the next stitch, bind off eight. Okay, so we now have a pico on the end and then we have all these bound off stitches. You're going to pass your um, last stitch back to your other needle Okay, so pass the stitch and then we're going to cast on from that stitch. So insert our needle to knit, 
twist and insert to cast on one. Okay, and then knit that stitch, pull through, twist, and insert to cast on two. All right, now we're gonna bind off eight. Knit one and knit two. Okay, start the bind off. Bind off one, knit a stitch, bind off two, knit a stitch, bind off three, knit a stitch, bind off four, knit, bind off five, knit, bind off six, knit, bind off seven, knit, and bind off eight. And then pass that stitch back to your other needle and you're ready to cast on for more picots. So see how these are nice and lovely, just spaced out. You're gonna have these little peaks going across. So you're gonna repeat those sections uh, again, that, um, that whole section of uh, casting on two, binding off eight, passing the stitch back over to your other needle and go until you have six stitches remaining for your final amount. And I will meet you back at that place so we can work the final repeat and last picos. All right, pause your video and I will see you soon. All right, I'm down to my last six stitches here. I've already passed that stitch back over and we're going to um, cast on two stitches just as before. And there's one and cast on two. Okay. And now we're just going to bind off seven. So we're going to leave one stitch uh, remaining. So knit uh, one, two. Okay, so let's just count our bind offs. So we've got one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. Okay, pass that stitch back over. All right, and now we're going to uh, cast on two, one, and two. All right, now you're going to bind off the remaining. So we're gonna knit these two. Bind off one. Knit the last one. Bind off two. And then now we can pull through and cut off our yarn. And this little pico is gonna look a little different, so I'm going to um, uh, weave in my tail back here and kind of tack it down so that it uh, imitates that. So that's all you're going to do there. So just get enough yarn to weave in a tail, cut it, and pull the other out. And a little bonus, let's show um, tacking down this pico that's at the end of our bind off. It looks a little funny, so we're just going to come down here, kind of pinch it and find a good spot. I'm gonna go under a couple of stitches here and pull it down. And I'm just going to follow my um, pattern here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go around that stitch and follow that line. So we're gonna go in and I'm gonna grab a stitch around here. So I'm gonna go down and around underneath here. I'm just simply following what my knitting is doing. All right, and then we're gonna go up and then we'll go down again. And then go around. Let's see. We go around here back this direction. I'm gonna go up. And I'm gonna go a little further up and in here. So just jump over 
here and around. And then I'm going to come into this stockinette or this, this garter stitch area and kind of do a little serpentine weaving around to get that in. So all you're doing is just following what your yarn has done before. And then it makes it invisible. And then kind of just come around until you get into this stockinette section here. So I actually went all the way around this little yarn over here and nobody can tell the difference. <laughs> so you just weave in a little bit more and cut your tail. And you wanna uh, block your pico, just block those out. Um, you can um, wash it out and wring it out, um, do a wet, um, uh, a wet technique, or you can steam it. Uh, so wet blocking technique, I do have a video down below, but for the Picos, I suggest uh, having one of those little rust proof T-pins and you're just going to tack down your um, T-pin on each Pico, okay? And then let it dry amply uh, so that it doesn't roll. Well, I hope you enjoyed making your grandma's simple eyelet shawl or shawlette like I'm wearing right now and I made. Um, these little picos just peek on through. Make sure that you um, wet block yours and, um, you know, pin out and pin it out. I just lightly blocked mine, so I'll have to keep it from rolling from actually, I need to block it a little bit better. But anyway, it turned out really well. I enjoy it. Sorry, I'm looking at my image. <laughs> I think it looks good. I'm enjoying it. It's nice and small for summer, but you can also make it nice and big for winter. And with the stockinette field on it, it would be really great for a nice prayer shawl for someone or nice to wrap for some warmth. Um, I think it would be lovely to give as a gift. Uh, have a wonderful day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.